knowledge-intensive system architecture really is about trying to merge uh, the uh, discipline from artificial intelligence of knowledge-based systems and the discipline of system architecture. Um, so system architecture really is about making architectural decisions. Um, and uh, when I talk here about system architecture, what I really mean is uh, model-based system architecture. So creating a model, a mathematical model that you can enumerate and evaluate with, um, with uh, functions. Um, and then evaluating those architectures, those models using uh, the functions that you provide and then down selecting uh, the best architectures based, for example, an, on an optimization algorithm. So we can use the field of knowledge based systems to improve these uh, system architecture tools for, for, for various reasons. And I'm going to try to give you uh, some examples of that. So for, for instance, if you imagine that you're trying to build a system architecture tool to uh, explore the trace space of architectures for a constellation of Earth observing satellite systems. So in this case, um, your architectural model, your architectural decisions would uh, concern things like choosing a set of instruments, choosing whether you want to fly a radar versus a radiometer or a sounder, for instance. Uh, and it would include something about the selection of the orbit as well. Am I flying these instruments in low Earth orbit, in geostationary orbit, and so forth? One of the key difficulties in creating this model is going to be in how do you model um, the, uh, what I call the synergies between these instruments. Uh, so to give you an example, if you put um, uh, an altimeter together with a microwave radiometer um, in, in the context of an oceanography instrument, uh, what's going to happen is that the accuracy of the altimeter measurement that you're going to be able to do is going to improve. Uh, just by the presence of this uh, microwave radiometer. Uh, what this basically does um, is that it uh, brings down one of the components of the error budget in the altimetry measurement, uh, in particular the, uh, um, uh, the wet atmospheric correction uh, component of the error budget. Um, so if we didn't have this microwave radiometer together with the radar altimeter, uh, this component of the error budget would be higher and therefore uh, we would that would result in lower accuracy. Um, so if you want to model that, the typical way of doing that in a um, standard system architecture tool, let's just say that you have a MATLAB model, for instance, for that, uh, would be doing things like having an if-then statement. If I have this instrument together with this other instrument, then accuracy is high, otherwise accuracy is low, or this component is high, otherwise the component is low. The problem, of course, is that when you're doing system architecture, you have a large number of these uh, instruments and a large number of orbits, and essentially you would end up with thousands and thousands of these if-then statements, and would, your, your program would basically become a mess. So um, what I tried to do in particular in my dissertation, um, partially motivated by this fact, is how to include something that's called knowledge-based systems uh, into system architecture tools to uh, basically deal with large quantities of expert knowledge uh, in system architecture. So um, what are knowledge-based systems? Um, so the idea started, um, I guess, in the 1960s or so uh, with uh, two cognitive psychologists, Newell and Simon um, from the Carnegie Mellon University, uh, that uh, found out basically that the way in which humans reason uh, can be modeled by chunks of knowledge that sort of work like if-then statements. So, for instance, um, when you uh, wake up and try to go to work each morning, and let's say that you say that your car is not, work, no, is not starting, you know that if the car is not starting, you should probably check the battery. Could be an electrical problem, right? So, you know, there's sort of uh, if something, then something. If condition, then action, right? Um, so. Based on that, um, they proposed that maybe we could write computer programs that had a large number of these if-then statements in some efficient way uh, that would basically mimic the way in which humans, human experts uh, reason to solve a problem. And um, they actually did that, started experimenting with that, and um, I guess the first um, su really successful experiment would be the Mycin rule-based system Mycin, M-Y-C-I-N, um, by some researchers at Stanford, um, uh, Buchanan, uh, Feigenbaum, and so forth. Uh, so what the Mycin system was uh, able to do was basically to diagnose a uh, bacterial infection, 
um, and then uh, prescribe the right kind of antibiotic for it. And he did that using 450 rules. So 450 if-then statements. Um, so that was really the beginning of, uh, uh, or the explosion of rule-based systems in, in artificial intelligence. And they were applied to, to many, many disciplines. And they are, they are still applied today. I would have to say that um, for general artificial intelligence, they have today been abandoned in favor of more uh, statistical oriented uh, methods uh, like Bayesian methods and things like that because the if-then structure is quite rigid actually what they could do uh, but they, they, they still remain very applicable and in particular I think they are very applicable to system architecture and so I'm going to try to explain to explain why. Um, so let's see, uh, main components of the knowledge-based system um, are a database where you have your facts. A fact is basically something that you know is true uh, so if uh, we recall the example of the car, I know that the car is not starting. That would be a fact, right? And I know that my car has a battery, and I know that um, uh, it's very common that um, when cars don't start in the morning, it's a problem related to batteries, right? So those are facts. A rule would be something like uh, with the if-then statement, right? So if the car is not working, check the electrical engine. It has an action in the right-hand side, right? So uh, in a knowledge-based system, you have the database of facts, which is called the working memory, uh, database of rules, which typically uh, contain the actual expert knowledge, the prescriptive part um, of the knowledge-based system. And then it's basically an inference algorithm, some way of uh, concatenating rules. So let's say if, I say, if I know that P is true, and I have a rule that says that uh, P implies Q, then the inference algorithm will deduce that Q is true. Basically, that's the idea. Um, so how do we apply um, knowledge-based systems to system architecture? That's the big question, right? Um, so let's start with uh, um, the enumeration process. Or actually, let's start with the encoding process. Um, the way in which you can improve the system architecture process uh, using knowledge-based systems is by defining facts, defining templates, which are just classes of facts, for your architecture. So basically what you, what you would do is to have, um, in the case of the Earth Observing Satellite System, you would define a fact that has one property for each decision. So it would have something like uh, one property for the instruments that you choose, one property for the orbits that you choose, and you could define other properties maybe related to the sequence of the missions, the sequence in which you launch the missions or something like that. Um, so the idea is that you have one slot, one property per decision. So that's something that's still very similar to that, um, to let's say an array that would contain just the numbers of the options, uh, but it's just much more transparent. It's much more clear and much, more, much easier to understand uh, from the user perspective. Um, and what, it, what this also does is that it, give, it gives you a framework to define rules. Uh, that you can later use for these architectures. Um, so that's for the encoding part. So that's for the encoding part. Uh, the next step would be the enumeration. So how do you enumerate architectures based on this um, knowledge-based system? So now you have a uh, fact that you, you, that you have defined for your architecture. So the idea is that you can define rules that will construct a feasible architecture uh, from pieces of architecture. So you can basically have a a uh, fact that represents a partial view of your architecture. Let's say that you have, make, you have made um, uh, maybe one decision about whether you want to fly this instrument or not, but you haven't made any of the other decisions. So you have one rule that will uh, add a little piece to the architecture, make another decision or another two or three decisions at the same time, depending on how big you want to uh, make these rules. Um, and the, the nice thing about this is that you can be smart so you can um, use domain knowledge when you're constructing these architectures. You could, because you know that, let's say, you, for instance, that you know that a LIDAR, uh, which is a, a laser altimeter, for instance, um, they typically fly in lower orbits. So if you see that an architecture has a LIDAR and you haven't still made the decision about where, which orbit this um, um, satellite should fly, you're going to use that information to assign that instrument to a lower orbit, right? Um, so that's for the enumeration process. For the evaluation process, uh, that's actually one of the 
uh, main pieces of my dissertation, I created a framework that's called Vassar for value assessment of system architectures using rules. And the main idea is that since the entire goal of a system architecture is to satisfy the needs of the stakeholders, uh, you can see the evaluation process as a pattern matching process where you're basically matching your requirements, your needs with the, your capabilities, basically what this particular architecture can give you. Um, so the idea then would be basically to have facts for the capabilities. In the case of Earth observing systems, these would be measurements. So you would have facts for measurements that are computed from your architecture, and then you would have facts for your requirements, uh, which are independent of the architecture, and then you would have rules that compare the two, that compare the measurements that you need with the measurements that you have. And from that, they deduce a score for the, for the architecture. So that's how you would um, use uh, the knowledge base framework for evaluating architectures. Um, and then perhaps the most important or the most, um, or one of the most interesting aspects of uh, using a knowledge base framework for system architecting is in the optimization side. Um, and the reason is because you can have uh, rules that basically act as heuristic search agents. Um, so a typical way of solving very complex global optimization problems is to use heuristics, things like genetic algorithms, for instance. Um, and these heuristics, so in genetic algorithms, uh, uh, the heuristics are crossover mutation, right? And if you go to another uh, heuristic algorithm like particle swarm optimization, simulated annealing, or whatever it is, you know, you're going to see different heuristics, but really what they're doing is basically the same. You have two things that you need to do. You need to um, um, you need some mechanism for hill climbing, for improving your architectures, and then you need some mechanism to avoid getting stuck in local minima. Some people call that um, exploration versus exploitation. Um, so how, however you do that, um, you need to find ways, you need to find heuristics to do these two functions. And so what, what this knowledge base framework allows you to do basically is to have a multi-agent um, framework in which you define many, many heuristics in the form of individual rules that will use both domain independent um, approaches like crossover, for instance, but also domain specific knowledge. Like one, for instance, one heuristic would be um, to improve an architecture by uh, putting two instruments together that are highly synergistic. Like the example that I gave you before about the radar altimeter and the uh, microwave radiometer, this agent, if it detected that these two instruments are not together in the architecture, it would change the architecture so that the two instruments are together, right? So that's one specific uh, heuristic that you can use to, in the search process. And the idea is to basically combine thousands, or may, maybe not thousands, depending on your computational uh, performance, your computational abilities, but um, combine a large number of these heuristics um, with um, you know, some of them using domain um, information, some of them really being domain independent to really find the best possible set of architectures.